Here are 10 facts about Ghostbusters. How many do you know? Number 10. When the original Ghostbusters movie was released in 1984, the hotline number featured in the film was real. People could call the number and hear a recorded message from the Ghostbusters themselves. The phone message played the very same commercial from the film. Callers would hear a pre-recorded message from Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd, who announced that they were unable to answer as they were busy busting ghosts. Number 9. Eddie Murphy was offered the role of Winston Zedmore in the original Ghostbusters film. However, he ultimately turned it down, leading to the role being taken on by Ernie Hudson. Winston was supposed to be in the film a lot earlier, and would have been in the scenes where the Ghostbusters capture Slimer in the hotel. Earlier drafts of the script also included a backstory which detailed Winston's time in the Air Force, something IDW's Ghostbusters comic book series went into more detail with. This comic series is a must-have for any Ghostbusters fan. Number 8. Slimer was based on John Belushi. It was a nod to Belushi's cafeteria scene in National Lampoon's Animal House in 1978. The role of Peter Vinkman was originally written for the actor, however, he passed away while Ackroyd was working on the script in early 1984. Initially, Slimer was conceived as a ghost resembling the comedic actor John Belushi, who was a close friend of Ghostbusters director Ivan Reitman and was originally considered for a role in the film. While Slimer's design evolved during production, there might be some subtle nods to Belushi in the character's behavior and appearance. Number 7. When trying to come up with the perfect name for his character, who was the brains of the Ghostbusters, co-writer Harold Ramis combined both personal and academic inspirations. Egon was the first name of Egon Donsbeck a Hungarian exchange student at Stephen K. Haight Elementary School who was Ramis' classmate when he grew up in Chicago. Spengler came from German historian and philosopher Oswald Spengler. For the look of his character, Ramis copied the style of an unknown guy he'd seen on the cover of an abstract architectural journal. He thought the man's old three-piece tweed suit, wire rim glasses, and puffed-up hair were perfect for his geeky parapsychologist. <laughs> Number 6. Ray Parker Jr.'s theme song for the Ghostbusters movie faced legal action from Huey Lewis, who alleged that it was too similar to his song, I Want a New Drug. The case was eventually settled out of court, but it brought attention to the similarities between the two songs and their catchy hooks. Number 5. The Ecto-1 used in the first Ghostbusters film was a modified 1959 Cadillac Miller Meteor Ambulance slash hearse combination car. Despite its prominent role in the film, only one vehicle was used for the iconic Ecto-1. Number 4. Ivan Reitman provided the voices for Zul and Slimer. Zul the gatekeeper of Gozu assumed various forms throughout the film possessing everything from an apartment refrigerator to Sigourney Weaver, yet his demonic voice always remained the same. It has since been revealed that director Ivan Reitman provided the unearthly vocals for the creature. Interestingly, he was also responsible for Slimer's dulcet tones in a secondary, uncredited role. I hope you're enjoying this video. Before we get to the top three, please could you take a moment to like and subscribe to my channel as it would be a great help. Number 3. The original plan for the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man's grand entrance in the third act battle sequence was that he would come up from beneath the ocean, much like the rebooted Godzilla does, and stand next to the Statue of Liberty to get a size comparison. However, in the days before CGI effects, this scene proved too difficult to shoot, and the filmmakers had to think of a different way to introduce the film's most iconic ghoul. Well, aside from maybe Slimer or Zul. <laughs> Number 2. When Harold Ramis was co-writing the screenplay for Ghostbusters, he had no intentions of even appearing in the film, let alone playing one of its main protagonists. However, once the script was done and the movie was going into production, he decided to play the role of Egon, after realizing he had unintentionally written the perfect role for himself. 
Jeff Goldblum, John Lithgow, Christopher Lloyd, and Christopher Walken were all considered for the role of Egon before Ramis took it for himself. He later made a conscious decision to never smile when he was in character as Egon. Number 1. Ghostbusters, the video game was released in 2009 and directly follows up on the events of not just Ghostbusters 2, but also Ghostbusters. The game takes place in 1991, two years after Ghostbusters 2. The Ghostbusters are now contracted city workers, and when a PK spike hits New York City they're back to their old routine of busting ghosts. The game even delves deeper into the series mythology that allowed for the summoning of Gozu atop the 55 Central Park West building, as well as the tunnels Vigo pumped slime through in the second movie. As an added bonus, the original cast Bill Murray, Ernie Hudson, Dan Aykroyd, Annie Potts, William Atherthorne, and Harold Ramis returned to reprise their characters. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something from the video and we'll see you on the next one.